my name is Dennis Van Aylstorp, and I'm with the Be Informed Partnership. And today I'm excited to talk about the bee management results for the season of 2012-2013. These results are based on the winter loss survey that we conduct every year for the last six years. And you can see a summary of those winter loss results only um, published at the Journal of Apicultural Research um, at the link below. So the first area that we want to talk about is the demographics of our respondent pool. And these beekeepers, of course, are across the country. We had very good participation last year, and we're really excited because now we have three years of data, and we can combine that data and do a real multifactorial analysis. And so stay tuned for that analysis, and we're really excited to see what those results will show. So if we look at the losses, what you can see here are the three, the, the, the summer losses, and you can see the summer losses were around 10%. Winter losses were about 40%, making a total loss of about 50% for the nation. Of course, that, that was a really bad winter. That was one of the worst winters we've had on record. And we're certainly concerned about that level of loss throughout the country. However, of course, there are different regions in the country, and certainly the different regions experience different losses. And so you can look at northern states, which are those... Um, highlighted in blue here, and they lost more colonies than the southern states. We can further divide the nation into sort of subregions, and what you can see here is that in the southwest had by far the lowest loss. But we saw a lot really heavy losses, certainly in the northeast and the and the midwest, um, and even along the west coast. And certainly these losses are unsustainable, and we don't want to maintain these losses. Now, I do want to talk about, in the, for, for all the management surveys we do, we're only going to talk about one factor at a time. However, on occasion, when we're looking at north and southern differences, we may talk about north and south losses, but we won't get down to this refined level until we have at least 300 respondents per state or per region. And you can actually go back and look at the blogs um, that we, we produced for specific regions of the country. One of the ways you can look at losses is by looking at operation size. And here you can see we had 3,800 beekeepers who were small-scale beekeepers, less than 50 beehives in their operations. They lost on average 42%, 45% of their colonies. We also have sideliners, about 200 of those respondents. They lost on average about 35% of their colonies and the 110 beekeepers who, who participated in the management survey who lost, who had managed more than 500 colonies, lost a total of about 30%. And so there's a big difference in losses based on colony operation size. Oh, another way of dividing the population is, is ask the people, did you move your colonies over the course of the year, or did you keep them in the same place over the course of the year? What you can see here, and this is the third year in a row that we've seen this trend, is the people who moved their colonies lost fewer colonies than those who left their colonies in one place. Now this result could be confounded by the fact that people who moved their colonies tended to have larger operations, and so it could simply be a legacy effect or, or, or a confounded effect with operation size. And that's why we're excited about now that we can do a multifactorial analysis to tease that out. And so stay tuned for some of those results. We also ask a lot of questions about the beekeeper and what their philosophy is when they're keeping bees. And you can see there are some people who um, don't want to use anything that's unnatural in their hives, and they're over here, versus people who are willing to use any product at all, so synthetic pesticides to control varroa mite. And you can see from this analysis, there's no difference between any of these groups. We can also divide the population up into... Um, by the amount of money they make from beekeeping. And what you can see here is those people who make more than 90% of their income from keeping bees lost fewer colonies than those who did not make less, made less than 5% or made no money at all from keeping bees. In fact, some of them losing bees. And again, this is probably um, makes sense because commercial beekeepers who are always doing this, making their livelihood of it, are probably just better managers of their bees than backyard or hobbyist beekeepers. We can also ask why you keep bees. And of course, a lot of people keep bees for enjoyment, um, but there's other reasons to keep bees. And very interestingly, and we're going to get back to this point in some future vlogs 
people who reported making nukes or queens lost a lot fewer colonies than those who did not. So we think there's something about the actual act of making nukes that reduces colony losses. The information is for educational purposes only. References to commercial products or trade names do not imply endorsement by the Bean Forum Partnership or its members. The results presented here are the summary of the population who responded. The sample may not be representative of the beekeeping population at large. These results simply highlight differences in the sample population. The results cannot be considered conclusive, causative, protective, or a test to product efficacy or lack of efficacy.